Hello and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're solving lead code problem 62, Unique Paths. There is a robot in an M by N grid. The robot is initially located at the top left corner and the robot tries to move to the bottom right corner. The robot can only move either down or to the right at any point in time. Given two integers M and N, return the number of possible unique paths that the robot can take to reach the bottom right corner and the test cases are generated such that the answer will fit in two times 10 to the ninth. So let's look at some examples and we're actually not going to look at this first example here because the grid is too big and it's going to take forever to actually get through it. Let's go through the second one where instead of having um, seven columns, we only have two. So we'll basically just work with um, this grid here, right? <clears throat> so basically we would start in this point here and how many ways can we actually get to the bottom, right? Because we can only remember go down or to the right at any point. So we could do this path and then this path. So that would be one path. We could go down to the right and down. That would be another path. Or we can actually go down and to the right. So that is a total of three paths. And you know, finding the answer this way is really simple because uh, you just basically go through all the paths. Um, but what you don't actually do here is somehow not waste computations. And the crux of this problem is to use some sort of memoization or dynamic programming to reduce the amount of cycles um, that you need to compute because you'll actually realize that as you get closer uh, from the grid, you're going to start uh, repeating places that you've already been. So for example, if we're here, then we know that the distance to our finish is one, right? There's one tile in between them. So if we were taking another path, say, you know, say we started here and then went here and then reached a tile that we've already reached, well then we don't have to compute the distance from this tile until the end, we can actually just reuse it from a previous computation. And that's what we're going to do. We're basically going to restore um, any computations that we've done. So if we ever get to a tile again, we can just store the distance from that tile to our finish and we don't actually have to compute it again because you'll notice that if we go on this path, obviously we go on this tile and that's going to be repeated. Same if we go this way and this way, we wouldn't actually have to compute uh, this path again. Now, obviously in a small grid, this doesn't really matter because there's only three paths you can actually get to. But for this one where there's quite a few paths where we could take, um, we will end up actually just recomputing the same distance as we go through it uh, for certain tiles. And we want to avoid doing that. So we're basically going to use a uh, memoization dictionary to basically store the intermediate results. And you'll see how we do that. Um, but that's really the crux of the problem, right? We, it's a simple grid traversal. We're going to use a depth first search. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to combine that with some memo ization to actually reuse um, pre-computed things so we don't have to calculate it again and bring down our kind of uh, runtime. So that's the general gist of how we want to do it. Now let's actually go to the code editor and see how we implement something uh, like this and we can actually reuse this pattern in a lot of pro um, problems that are very similar to this one. So I'll see you in the code editor. Okay, we went through the basic intuition for the problem. Let's actually type it up and it's really quite simple. So the first thing that we want to do is remember we're going to be um, creating a memoization dictionary to store our intermediate results. So let's define that variable. So we're going to say self.memo. It's going to be an empty dictionary. Now what we want to do is obviously the distance from basically the final tile to itself is going to be one. Uh, you know, it's not zero in this problem. It's just one. Um, so we're just going to say self.memo of m minus one, oops, m minus one, and minus one. And this is one of those things that you kind of just realize when you actually do the problem, because you'll have this kind of off by one. And for some reason they count if you're actually on the tile, um, going to itself is apparently a distance of one. Um, so that's why we just set it equal to one. Uh, a little bit counterintuitive, but anyway. So now what we need to do is remember we need to actually call our DFS function to go from the top left to the bottom right and basically you know compute all the distances um, as we go along and basically store that intermediate result. So we're just going to call a DFS function and we'll, we'll implement it here in a second. And what we're going to pass in is going to be our current position and uh, sorry, the, the size of the grid, which is M and N, and then our current position, which is zero, zero, right? And what we want to do is at the end, we want to return self.memo 
of 0 comma 0. So basically, how many ways are there starting at 0 0 to get to the bottom right, right? How many unique paths are there? So now what we need to do is just actually define the DFS function that we'll use. So we're going to say def DFS. And we're going to say self. So this is going to take in M N and our current X and Y position inside of the grid. Now, because we're using memoization, and as we saw in the example, we can actually land on a tile that we've already been on. And if we've already been on this tile, then there's no reason for us to actually continue the DFS and you know potentially waste resources that we've already done. We know that if something exists in memo for that given X and Y position, then that is the the number of unique paths there are from uh, this current location to the actual uh, end of the grid. So we don't actually have to recompute it, we can just return that result immediately. So we can actually say if x comma y is already in so self if it's already in self dot memo, uh, then we want to return self dot memo of x comma y. So we don't actually need to recompute it, we can just return it. And that's really the beauty of having this uh, memoization dict. So now what we need to do is we need to actually go and uh, continue our DFS. So we've now seen that the the variable was not already computed. So that means that we need to compute it for ourselves now. And remember that in this grid, we can actually only go down and to the right, uh, we don't have to worry about the other directions, we can actually just uh, keep it to those two. So we're going to first need to actually check that we can actually move down or to the right, because uh, we need to make sure that we're not actually going out of the bounds of our grid. And that way we'd have an index error um, when we're trying to access the value. Um, so we just don't want to go outside of the grid, right? Actually, there, there are no values in the grid, we just we don't want to go outside of it. So we're going to say if so we need to make sure that our position for our x is actually less than um, the length of the columns, right? We need to make sure it's less than m. And we need to make sure that our y position is between zero, obviously, um, and the length of the rows. So if we're within those boundaries, then we're good, we can actually continue. So now we can say that the number of ways to get to the the end of the grid, the bottom right from our current position, so self memo of x comma y is going to equal to all the ways that we can get there if from this tile, we go to the right, and all the ways that we can get there if we actually go down. And this is where you'll see that the recursiveness of this problem comes into play. So we're going to say equals self dot DFS, and we're going to pass in the size of the grid that doesn't change. And we're going to say x plus one. So this way, we're going to go um, one in the rows or the column, sorry, and the column will say the same. So this is when we're actually going down. And then we also need to add the other case where we actually go to the right. So we're going to say self dot DFS, uh, the grid will stay the same M and x and this time the y value, oops, new keyboard, uh, y plus one. And then after we've computed that, uh, we simply just need to return self dot memo of x comma y. Now, if this else um, needs to trigger, so it basically, if we're not in the grid, then you know, the the number of ways from a point that's actually not inside the grid, will just return zero because we're outside of the grid, uh, we don't want to add anything to our solution, we can just consider it as, um, you know, a not invalid path. That's obviously why if we're outside of the grid, then we don't continue our search because we don't want to just go further outside the grid, we'll actually never reach um, our final destination. And you'll just get a um, probably timeout because your recursive function will never return. So we just return zero in this case. Now let's run this make sure we didn't make any silly bugs. It looks like it's fine. Let's submit this. And we're good to go. Cool. So what is the time and space complexity here? So in this example, because we're using the memoization, we'll only ever reach each square at most once, right, we may accidentally land on it again, but we're not actually recomputing anything. So for this reason, uh, our time complexity is just going to be the size of the grid, which is going to be m times n. 
where m is the number of rows and n is the number of columns or other way around it. It doesn't really matter, but it's just basically size of the grid, right? And for the space complexity, we're probably going to have to store uh, for each tile in our grid, the distance or the amount number of unique paths from that tile until basically the bottom right, uh, which means that we're going to basically store one element for every um, item in the grid. So our space complexity is also going to be the size of the grid. So pretty straightforward, time and space complexity both the same, basically just the dimensions of the grid. So that is how you solve unique paths. This is pretty good introduction problem to basic DFSing through a kind of uh, 2D matrix here. Has, you know, elements that you're going to see in many problems, memoization, checking, you know, whether your current position is in the memo dict, you're going to also have to check the boundaries of where you are. And you're also going to have to, you know, do some operation at each step, recursing one layer down into kind of your grid. And then, you know, going from there. So this one's pretty straightforward. I think there's a follow up problem, we'll probably solve it sometime soon. But yeah, that's how you solve this problem. Hopefully you found the video useful. Hopefully you learned something. If you did, why not leave a like and a comment it really helps me grow the channel. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.